Hi, and welcome to the workshop where we tackle the projects and procedures that you, our customers, ask us to demonstrate. Today we're going to be looking at a Toyota Prius with a couple of high voltage service issues and a Dodge Ram pickup, and that is a big pickup, with a very noisy serpentine belt. So let's get started. Our first project today is this Toyota Prius because Bruce from Westside Auto in Hartford, Wisconsin writes and tells us that he's seen a lot of hybrids lately, especially Priuses, and he'd like to be able to service them, but he's very concerned about safety issues. And so one of the things I'd like to show you is that this battery here in this Prius is a 201 volt battery and is about 125 amps on that. And so there's a lot of issues involved with safety. And here at the uh, workshop, we get a lot of questions about safety. Uh, how do you shut them down? What kind of equipment do you need? How to maintain the equipment? And so what we've done is brought an expert to help us out today. This is Matt Black from Maggie Glove and Safety. They make the HiArt brand of safety equipment. I brought a pair of rubber insulating gloves today. And rubber insulating gloves are a critical item for safety anytime you're working on or near exposed energized parts, such as the Prius. Wow, this is definitely what we need. Tell us about the gloves. Well, there's a few things you want to look for before you use your gloves. Uh, testing and inspection are a critical uh, factor anytime you're dealing with rubber insulating gloves. A couple things you want to look for. First, you look for the label. In this case, we have a red label, which indicates that this is a class zero glove. Class zero gloves are rated for 1,000 volts AC or 1,500 volts DC. That's important, isn't it? We, we have to have at least 1,000 volts of protection when we're working on these hybrids. That is correct. You want to make sure that the glove is rated accordingly to whatever the exposure is. Once you identify that it's the proper glove for your application, the next thing you want to do is do a visual inspection of it. How do we do that? I always like to start with the inside of the glove. And we do that by reversing it. And here we're looking for any imperfections, any defects in the glove, any nicks, any cuts, any abrasions. Holes. Holes, any tears. Even a pinhole can uh, reduce the glove's ability to protect the wearer. I would imagine a pinhole and 200 volts don't get along very well. That's right, that's right. The other thing you want to look for is any type of discoloration, any imperfections in the rubber itself, any changes in the texture. So we want to make sure that the rubber is in good shape and it hasn't aged. Once you finish the uh, inspection of the inside of the glove, you want to reverse the glove again. Here we're looking for any imperfections, any defects in the glove, any cuts, any tears, abrasion, any discoloration. I see you have some leather gloves here, and I'll bet you that you could put those on over the rubber gloves to protect them from that kind of damage, right? That's correct. This leather glove is designed to be worn over the rubber insulating glove. And what this does is provides mechanical protection, protects you from those nicks and those cuts in the, in the rubber insulating glove. And I noticed that the rubber goes way up uh, past the leather because I know that we want the rubber glove to protect me in this case, and the leather glove protects the rubber glove. But What's the distance we need to be um, cognizant of? In other words, there's got to be a certain amount of distance between the seam and the glove to be safe, right? That is correct. The ASTM and the OSHA standards require that you maintain at least a half inch clearance for class zero gloves. In this case, we have at least a half inch, so we're fine. Well, that's great. So Maggot is really providing a wide measure of safety right here. So when I put this particular glove on, and I'm going to have you hold those, this is a neatest bag. It says. Um, warning, hybrid vehicle in service. And so I notice it has a, a magnetic backing. We can just stick it someplace on the fender so people know we're, we're working on a hybrid vehicle. That's right. And as I put this glove on, um, is there any other thing that I need to do before I, uh, I shut this Prius down? I'm ready to go. We've uh, inspected the glove inside and out. We've uh, looked for nicks and cuts and scratches and we put a leather glove on that's not too long. It seems like I'm ready to go, right? Well, the one thing you want to do before you use them is you want to do an inflation test. You know, we can look ah. at the glove and, and see obvious nicks, cuts, or, or holes, but you can't see those pinhole leaks, so it's important to do an inflation test with the glove. I saw you roll them up a little bit before. That's correct. So, something like that? Yep. Oh, good. And what you want to do is put pressure on the glove and listen for any pinholes in it. And listen for pinholes. Well, like a balloon leaking, I guess, huh? That's correct. Don't, don't hear a thing. What is this date for? What this date is, is it's uh, the date that we tested the glove. In this case, this glove was tested in, on February 5th, so we're well within the, the range. The standard says that the glove must be tested within the previous six months. If it's a new glove, it has to be tested within the previous year. If you send the gloves back to Magid, one of the first things we're gonna do is we're gonna clean the glove, 
After we clean the glove, we're going to do a complete visual inspection to make sure that, similar to what we did, we look for any imperfections in the rubber, any deterioration. And then once we do the visual inspection, we do the inflation test, again, very similar to what you did. But then after that, we do an electrical test. In the electrical test, we put in a piece of equipment that's going to subject this glove to 5,000 volts for a period of one minute. That's a heck of a test for a 1,000 volt glove, isn't it? It is. That includes a safety factor to make sure that, it, that it's going to hold up to the 1,000 volts. Once it completes the test, our system is automated, so it sends a report to, the, to our computer system where you, we generate an automated report. Uh, that report sends an email back to the customer to let them know that the glove either passed or failed. Oh, that's good. Well, when do they get stamped? Well, once we complete the test, we uh, dry the glove off. Then we stamp it with the appropriate label. So if there's a hole or something in the glove, you'll probably identify the hole so people know where it failed, and maybe that'll help them to be more careful in the future. Right. Normally, we'll circle uh, the area where there was a failure, and when we send that back to the customer, they can at least identify uh, you know, what the problem was and, and maybe uh, trace it back to the cause. Well, when we send our gloves in for recertification, how long before we get them back? The turnaround time is normally about two weeks. About two weeks. So it'd be a good idea then, I think, if we have two pairs of gloves, right? Because when we have one in for recertification, we can keep working on hybrids with the others. So, wow, thanks. That's great information, Matt. Thanks for stopping by. By the way, do you want to stick around and help me take the cover off of this inverter? That'd be great. Super. All right. Well, first of all, let's get this thing shut down. These Panasonic batteries have a service jack, sometimes called a master disconnect, that's used to open circuit the battery pack. And to remove it, Pick it up to unlock it, swing the handle down, and wiggle it out. Now, this master disconnect or service jack is actually just a shorting plug. And what it has is a fuse inside, as you can see, that connects these two large terminals together. And what that does is connects two large wires together inside of the battery pack to complete a circuit. And another thing that this device has is two small little terminals right here that are uh, for an interlock system. So as long as this is out of the battery pack, the PCM knows that this vehicle should not run because something in the high voltage system has been disconnected because of the open circuited interlock. Now let's meet Matt up front and we can start to get this inverter's cover off. I like to keep the master disconnect up front where I can keep an eye on it. Now the next step is to remove the fasteners to take the cowling off so we can get at all of the bolts that hold the inverter's cover on. Wow, thanks Matt for getting those out. Speeds this up a little bit. While Matt and I are taking the bolts off this inverter cover, let's find out more about the belt noise on that Dodge pickup. What'd you find out, Eddie? Okay, here's what we got. Rodney at r, r Auto in Virginia emailed us and wanted to know how to properly diagnose a noisy serpentine belt system on a 97 Ram. Here to help us out with that, Doug at Deco. How you doing, Doug? Great. Okay, how are we going to do it? Well, what we're going to do start off with is with the engine running, we're going to take the water bottle and spray a little bit of water on the rib side of the belt. If the noise goes away, that's a clear sign that there's an alignment problem with one of the pulleys. So to do that, we have our Deco laser tool. We're going to take that, put it on the crank, shine it to the pulleys, and determine which pulley it is that's out of line, correct that, and that should do it. On the other hand, if when we spray the water, the noise gets worse, that's when we look at it to see that there's a tension problem. So we replace the tensioner, and that should solve this issue. All right, so the belt's off. I have the uh, alignment tools on the pulleys, which are actually really easy. You know, they were magnetic, which is pretty cool. Um, so now that those are on there, uh, what are we looking for? Well, we're looking to make sure that the pulleys are in alignment. So by doing that, you have the laser light that goes from the crank up to the pulley. As you see up here on the power steering pulley, the line goes just outside the dead center. That's not much of a misalignment. So when we add the Deco W Profile belt to it, it will alleviate that issue and we'll have a nice quiet belt. All right, Doug, so the belt's off. We checked for misalignment on the pulleys. We found a little one, nothing too serious. We want to make sure that the old belt we took off uh, was the failure. So can you tell me a little bit more about how to check that properly? Well, to check it properly, we've got to make sure because new EPDM belts, belts are made with EPDM compounds today, and that compound doesn't allow it to crack like we're used to seeing. So to check the belt, we simply take an awareness gauge, we take and put it into the groove of the belt. The belt, the awareness gauge will go all the way inside there so you won't be able to feel it. So that tells me that the belt is worn from within okay. and that's the way they wear. Okay. With a new belt, when we put that on there, 
it goes to the top and it's it hangs it stays at the top so you can feel the the awareness gauge and you know that this belt is going to fit the pulleys as they're prescribed to and it's going to fit okay well let's put it on and get the truck down the road let's go all right now as we do our zero voltage test on the inverter we're still going to have our gloves on right that's correct and the other thing we need to check is make sure our meter is rated according to the work that we're going to do. That's right. We need a Cat 3 1,000 volt meter. And make sure it says that on the meter that you're using. That's very, very important. We're also using Moto Logic because there's a great step-by-step -step instruction here to show us which terminals to look at first and what the expected outcome of the test should be. That's basically is a zero voltage test. So what we're going to do first is connect up to the wires that go right to the high voltage battery. It's 201 volts. And we can see that we're not at 201 volts. It's at zero. And that's exactly where it should be. The next thing we're going to test is the terminals that go to the motor windings, MG1, motor generator number one, and motor generator number two. And so basically we go between the phases. In other words, from one phase to the next, and then to the next. And as you can see, as I move from phase to phase, the meter settles at zero voltage or near zero voltage. So we know that there isn't any current there either. And then we'll go to the other motor generator and do the same thing as I move from one phase to the next to the next. Now we know that this inverter is completely safe to work on. The cooling system could be drained, it could be removed for service, and we're good to go. When you replace the master disconnect into the battery pack, swing the handle back up into position, and the most important thing is push it back down to engage the interlock. Otherwise, this vehicle would not start. Well, Rodney from R&R &R and Bruce from Westside and everyone else watching this webcast, I hope we've answered your questions and demonstrated some things that you find useful. And these vehicles are ready for the road, but we're not quite done yet. We have one more surprise for you, and here it comes now. Well, whether it's a modern automobile like the Dodge Ram pickup or this 1951 Ford Street Ride pickup, Misaligned pulleys and noisy serpentine belts are always going to be a problem that need to be taken care of from time to time. So, Doug and Eddie, come on in and work your magic. 